I've got I've got levels, Mrs. Ryan. We've got camera. We've got lights. <laughs> Everything appears to be working. Great. Pushing the button. Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> Get rid of that. All right. Hi, Mrs. Ryan. Hello, hello. Holy golly here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really ready to be back in the studio. I feel like I just left it. I bet. <laughs> I oh, I bet. Late last night. Oh. I finally made that sandwich at, I don't know, 9 o'clock or something like that. I was like, oh, I got to eat something today. I'm so glad you did. Uh, hi, welcome back, Mrs. Ryan. Welcome back, everybody else, to the old late night playset. Today is Wednesday, November thirteenth, two thousand nineteen. We are in the middle of PEC LA Week because it's their third anniversary, and tonight's guest is absolutely part of that. Our guest tonight is Mr. Nicholas Hunziker. Uh, he's a fine artist. He's a race car driver. He's a very big, uh, well-known person in the uh, Porsche. I don't know how big he is, but he's well-known in the uh, Porsche community. He does poster signings. He's known enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, globally. Uh, and he's uh, our good buddy as well. So he will be here to yeah. talk all about uh, what he's been up to, as well as the celebrations that are going on at the PEC this weekend, because he will be part of that as well. Cool. Uh, in the meantime my name is jay ryan this is nicole ryan we are the ryans and this is late night playset we are just delighted that you are back uh we should probably start with talking about yesterday oh i'm still sick over it oh the disaster show yeah because we had such a good guest that we were you know i don't want to say trying to impress but we were very excited that she was here we were very looking uh, forward to getting to know her and we did and everything was just spectacular and swimmingly well the whole taping went swimmingly well and then afterwards it was like how come that file's not there? It says it recorded. How come this isn't there? Hey, wait, where did that go? How come? And it was just a bunch of techn technical glitches. Uh, I, I don't even want to get into all of them because it was just a weird comedy. Murphy's Law, for sure. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Uh, thank you so and apologies you. to... Oh, thank you to you for saying that. Thank you and apologies to Lisa Taylor, uh, who just simply did not get our best work yesterday. She she came. She looked lovely. She drove a long way. She came in from Lake Arrowhead for this and uh, the night before. And, and, uh, and gosh, I mean, it looked great. She looked beautiful. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had to pull the audio from literally one of the like iPhone cameras that are in the room. That's how we. That's how I ended up doing it because the audio file was just not, just not there, or corrupt because some of the other files were corrupt too. You lemonade. Holy that's smokes! That's what you did. Te technological lemonade. I guess so. So we got something out there for you. Uh, please check it out. Uh, we're going to have Lisa Taylor back at her earliest convenience um, to try to do it right. But we had a great conversation, and it was really nice getting to know Lisa Taylor. Definitely. So that's that. Uh, that was technical difficulties. Oh, with that, some of the. <laughs> This is not really a call to arms, but I'm just going to put it out there because we have a lot of people who are offering to help us these days. Um, I think the issue we're running into here is when we started doing this show on a whim on our old iPhones and iPads and stuff like that, um, everything was sort of fine-ish until, oh, we get, you know, until we grow to a bigger thing. Somebody buys us new equipment and all that stuff. Well, I keep making it look better and there's been no need for new equipment or whatever because it keeps, it, the show keeps improving. Um... We may be at the point where we need some new equipment, so uh, I don't know. We're probably going to need about probably about ten thousand dollars worth of Apple gear <laughs> between new phones and a new computer and uh, an iPad. So if anybody has an Apple hookup, by all means, let us know. That would uh, be awesome. Yeah, we used to in the old days in the business, but the person who used to handle the entertainment business also is not there she's anymore. Not there she's, anymore. She's moved several companies, doing wonderful things. Um, so that's that. Uh, okay, on to other better things. Let's see. I would like to, Mrs. Ryan, show you a picture. Yeah. Throw up here of perhaps an exchange student that may coming may be coming to stay with us for a bit. So uh, pretty. That there is a beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a 996. Uh, not not everyone's favorite most loved Porsche. However, that is one of my most favorite looking Porsches of all times. The 996 4S, um, and that is a Telefunken car right over there. Over there belongs to uh, Tony Fishman, the Mr. Telefunken, CEO of Telefunken, who provides all our audio gear. 
Thanks, Tony. And uh, and sponsorship and stuff on the on the car, etc. <laughs> and uh, he, he was talking about bringing a car out here because they, they they travel out here from time to time. And I said, well, gosh, you could always leave it with us, and we could make sure it's you know run it once a month up to the crest or whatever. Uh, and one thing led to another, and it looks like it may actually happen. So we're joking around, and I said, well, you just that looks great, but it's missing a t- telefunk and livery. I said, leave it with me for for a little bit, and you know we'll see what we do. He's like, that's exactly what I would like to see happen. So, I don't know. We might be getting another Porsche. Not own another Porsche, but we might be getting another Porsche in the family, at least rad. for a spell. That'd be rad. I saw the Facebook between you guys. Yeah. Uh, Scott and I have been talking, well, going back and forth about about some, having him bring something out here. That car makes the most. In my mind, I'm like, oh, one of the old vintage Telefunken Bill. Like, that would be beautiful. Uh, what makes more sense is a car with air conditioning and <laughs> comfortable seats and all that stuff. <laughs> So, uh, so let's see, that might happen. And then the only other thing I need to mention top of show here is a salute to our friend, our Instagram friend, Brian Cheney from Porsche South Orlando. Uh, he is not only the host of the Porsche night at the Ace Cafe down there the third Monday of every month, but he also uh, really made some waves this month selling cars at Porsche South Orlando. He sold 10 cars in one month, which is a, is, is a lot for that for a, of that mark Kudos, and, and Brian. for that area. Uh, I, I think there's guys who've been doing it a long time who probably do that all the time. He's relatively new at it. You remember he only started there recently. Yeah. Uh, so it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Congratulations, Brian. Good for you. Keep it up. Uh, thanks for being a friend and a fan. And uh, check out his show. It's on the, I think it's the Ace Cafe YouTube channel, if I'm not sh- mistaken. Uh, but you can certainly YouTube it up, uh, Porsche Night at the Ace Cafe. I love seeing him commenting on stuff. It's become quite a nice exchange between all of us. I'm glad you said that because in the message he uh, very much wanted to include, uh, tell Mrs. Ryan how much she inspires others and uh, a lot of nice things. He was very, very complimentary about you and, and how you are. Well, thanks. So it seems to be quite mutual. All right, uh, that's enough talking. That's enough. I think I got Telefunken, Brian Cheney, technical difficulties, <laughs> new gear, and Lisa Taylor all out of the way. Time to start the show. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I hope everything's recording. It certainly looks like it is. Our friend Nicholas Hunziker is going to be here in a couple minutes. But uh, until then, Mrs. Ryan, I've got an East Coast feed. And uh, and that's about it. We've got Dave watching what's going on. Most of my stuff was announcements. So, East All Coast right. feed? Yes, please. All right, let's check in. Roll it. Hal, Denbury, Chive. I have no idea where they are. Let's check it out. Roll it. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, you just texted me a few minutes ago. And then, just because the universe does these kind of things, I saw something on the wall right behind me. Can you see it? Can you see oh my it right god, there? again. Second time now. And by the way, this is Victor. You guys have met him before. Say hi, Victor. Hi, how are hi, you? Victor. Victor's one of my good friends and clients, and we're out at a place, Mr. Ryan, you might know quite well if you look around. Mm. If you didn't guess it by now, it's Chuck Steakhouse. So, East Coast Feet coming to you oh. Chuck Steakhouse, just because your picture was on the wall. Love you. This is where, <laughs> thank you, Kaz, man. Back to the studio. This is where um, he thinks he knows me. So <laughs> I grew up in that area. So I've lived in that area, uh, you know, two decades longer than he has. Uh, uh, the Chuck Steakhouse I knew used to be the place that he now knows as Two Steps. I still to this day have never, ever been to, that's a Chuck Steakhouse right by the Danbury Airport, right off of exit four, I guess it would be, uh, right by the mall there. You, you've been right past it. You've driven past but it But you haven't times. gone there. I've never been inside that restaurant. Okie doke. Uh, but it's pretty funny because he knows that I know the other Chuck Steakhouse, which is the old firehouse that's now two steps. That's different. When I was a kid, it was called Fitzwillies. It was called Fitzwillies and there was a fire truck upstairs. <laughs> Still a fire truck upstairs, but that's now two steps. Take uh, notes, uh, Enough of that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, everybody. I'm so, <laughs> so happy to be not at the computer. Okay. Uh, 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 Mrs. Ryan, I gotta go get the calendar, so why don't we all watch this? (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, that song means it was time for me to get the calendar, and (laughs) now I have it. And by the way, the calendar is sponsored by today's guest, Nicholas Hunziger. (laughs) Fine artist, fueled by passion. Let's see here. I'm going to make an X on this 13, Mrs. Ryan, to denote that David Letterman is not sitting in that chair. But uh, I want to make it clear that we are not giving up on getting David Letterman as a guest on our show in this room here. Uh, I think that that's going to happen. I don't know when, but I want to make sure that we don't drop that ball while we have the other conversations in the meantime. 
You know I what think I mean? It, like, I know it's yes. a push. I know it's a big push. <laughs> I'm glad you reminded me. Um, it's an unspoken conversation that is the elephant in the room. So I will definitely make sure that's for, at the forefront. Of yeah, I don't, I don't mean to be pushy about it. I just, we're not going to stop doing this. Of course. Well, until I'm told to. You know what I mean? We could, we, it, it, we, I, that's how this will go. <laughs> He's either going to be sitting here or they're going to say, okay, well, it's not going to happen for six months, so you can stop doing your little calendar deal. There was a minute where I had a friend that wanted to do a show, a podcast, about how to do PR, because, and we all know how to do it, blah, 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 and we were really good at it. Everyone thinks they do, and we know how to tell people how to do stuff, and... I did not want to be part of that because I don't like telling people what to do anymore. <laughs> it's not enjoyable for me. Uh, but it, Also, people are a little less uh, attuned to listen than they yeah, used Yeah, they to don't be. want to be told <laughs> what were, to do. When they were paying you money to hear, they would absolutely want that advice. They don't enjoy that, but um, <laughs> it definitely comes in handy with what we're dealing with right now. Oh, having, really? Having that background of like, Less is more. How to go after what you want and not just mass market paper everything. That's what everything. I think people don't understand. Yeah, we're trying yeah. to do this an inside baseball kind of way, which goes against what everybody else would do with a podcast or a youtube type show, where they're just trying to get the followers and trying to get the... Keeping it closer to the vest and growing it organically is different than just paper everything and see what sticks. Yeah, because we it's funny, we have a, a dual uh, uh, obligation here, because one is to the viewers, you, of course, um, uh, and then also we're trying to we're trying to set ourselves up for the future, so we're also trying to appeal to a completely different group that none of our viewers are even aware exists, let alone <laughs> totally how it works. Community. And that, yeah, and that's not like a, you wouldn't understand. I'm not trying to say that. It's technical, <laughs> Dr. Reichman. <laughs> One of our little toys. Uh, no, more on the lines of like, uh, it's just a different world. It's a different world that you don't see, and that's kind of the point. You're not supposed to see it. Yeah. And we have no intention of blowing that for anyone. Right. Because we need their help. <laughs> that's how that yeah. works. Yes. All right, Mrs. Ryan, it's time to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? Other than trying to keep what's private, private uh, <laughs> here I am on a talk show. But uh, w they're finding new scientists are finding new ways to extract hydrogen from ocean water, which is like clean fuel and how to propel the future a little bit mm -hmm. cleaner. Um, so that's a really neat way to do it. And the re they're finding that you can separate molecules of parts of water with electric currents, which we were just talking about. This was, uh, I recall back to the days of James May on Top Gear, the Top Gear days when they were really on Top Gear. Uh, and they did a, he did a hydrogen car thing, but it basically, yeah, it runs on a couple gallons of water. And then it get, you get it somehow the device the app whatever gets the hydrogen to, or converts it into hydrogen and then the thing runs on hydrogen and it's not like oh a gallon a mile anymore it's like oh a thousand miles to a gallon. It, it can crazy. be exponential. The problem is getting salt and the uh, that affects currents and the transfer mm. of electricity. Yeah. Uh, but they're they're exploring that because we have a ton of ocean water at our disposal. So <laughs> more every day. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, definitely more every day. Um, also more every day is old people who are lonely and have less people around them. So Aetna has partnered with CVS uh, financially, but they're... Aetna, the insurance, like AETNA? Yeah, Aetna? Okay. they're making it their agenda kind of to combat loneliness. And so they're part starting in Miami, but mm -hmm. they're partnering with senior seniors in high school and college. Different oh, programs that. to go with senior adults. Like a little adults. brother club. Yeah, just to like check in and here's how to here's what's going on. Here's how to use your iPhone. Like I'm not worried about the youth. I know I say it every time, but if you go out in public and start paying attention, it's the youth who are talking to the seniors at Target or wherever you happen to go. You know what yeah. I mean? They're like, hey, how you doing today, sir? Is your back bothering you? Like, why are you in the scooter? You know what I mean? I They're literally have seen They're asking real those. questions, and yeah. they actually care about the other. answer. And that, so I love that Aetna and CVS, which are big, huge behemoth companies, are seeing stuff like that and utilizing it. I totally agree with you. You did something, a story very recently, that was a much smaller scale, but something similar about, like, park benches. 
like sitting next to a, a yeah. person, a lonely person, the UK. lonely benches or something like yeah. that. And it was such a neat idea along the same line. The UK is doing that with uh, benches where you get like chat benches where you're like, I want to talk to someone, sit next to me and I talk. And like I'm open to conversation. Yeah. yeah. For, in, for, in coffee shops and like just finding ways to involve community and people that are in it in I, different ways. In addition to making a mess, I, I think that that's absolutely awesome. Same. So, uh, sorry for my mess. I didn't mean sorry to for your mess. You. Uh, no, I just I love that at CVS are doing that. So I'm back in their corner for sure. Um, something that's coming up next year that I'm also in the corner of is Curb Your Enthusiast. Oh yeah, that's good news, isn't it? Yes, I know. And so it was many of us. Kind of accidentally brought out by Jeff Garland, but I. Oh, is that right? He wasn't supposed to. Oh, no. I didn't know that because no. I, well, I had heard that they were coming back a while ago, but then there was the death of everyone's favorite Bob Einstein, who played uh, Marty Funkhauser, Funkenhausen, whatever, on the show. So I thought maybe Love they would. Maybe was that part of the delay, or was there anything? I don't know. They okay. didn't talk about that in anything I read. It was more the surprise that it came out the way. Well, because as I understand, it's been sh- done and shot. I think right. Is it already done, and it's going to come out in January, or are they going I've back heard to work? I've heard that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It, it's changed a little bit, and every because everyone wants to honor the product of what it is and not half-ass anything. So if he was, yeah, be, and Larry won't. He he would rather not put out a season. Right, and everyone I think involved in that feels similarly. So after much discussion of like how to go forward, that's what they decided, and that's awesome. I'm. I'm a big fan. I mean, I'm not alone. I'm a big fan of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I can't totally. wait for more episodes. Totally. And I like I wasn't that. sure when it came back the last time because it took a couple. But, and then I remembered, oh, it always took a couple to get into whatever they were, whatever they were up to that season, whatever Larry's thing was. Yeah. Well, I, and, I, and I, I ended up really enjoying it. I think I knew that. I probably knew it at the time, but like I forget as I'm watching it that it's not really scripted. It's more like Larry's idea for something that happens and then they all – yeah, writing Respond. wise, it's not scripted at all. It's it's not. There is no dialogue written. Right. They just come. All right. So the gist of it is, you're going to come over here, and you guys have a little thing, and then the, we need to get to this over here, and then they work their magic. That's where the fucking genius casting came in. It's that cast pretty magical. Is one of the best of all time, I think. It's phenomenal. God, Susie Essman. Oh my God, is oh. there a better character? She's because she's not like that. that. She's show. so amazing. She's so nice and sweet. She's fantastic. Yeah, I worked with Jeff for like a week, and uh, I I love talking to him on the phone. That's all I know of him. <laughs> that too. Yeah, uh, huge fan. And then lastly, though, speaking of television personalities, there's actually going to be a Friends reunion unscripted special. We don't know that, but something might be going on at HBO. At HBO, HBO I Max. heard the same thing. It's, I heard the same thing. Everything is very secretive, but there may or may not be something Friends related, and it may or may not involve the entire cast from what I heard. <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> they're I, not saying anything if you read very carefully, but they're also saying that it could be everything They're saying a lot wanted. between the lines that hasn't, it's an ev- evolute, uh, shoot, uh, an evolved level of what's been said before, so... Who knows? But it sounds super neat in that it's unscripted. is pretty rad. Well, I like the, that you packaged it next to the Kirby Enthusiasm one, of course, because that's how we got the Seinfeld reunion. It was on the Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah. It, there's a lot of creative genius minds in my old world of like how to – we can do stuff quickly for promotional purposes. They're actually entertaining for people how to do it. So having an unscripted the rollout. Friends special. The proper rollout. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a long time. Going back to the old school days. I, hey, and that's been <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? Da 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 dun dun da da dun dun da 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 dun What a Holy day. crow, I know. Uh, I'm exhausted already. It's only halfway through the week. It's gonna be a fun one tomorrow with Jeff Swart. <laughs> Okie doke. <laughs> All right, are we did is that is that do we get to everything? I think that's everything. <laughs> We're going to take a break, right? We're not going to say goodbye. <laughs> We've got a guest to do still. Woo-woo. All right. All right, Mrs. Ryan. Uh, everybody else, we're going to take a quick break. It's time to get our guest, Nicholas Hunziger, in here. He's a good friend. We're going to chat about all the things. I've got some of the things that you would expect, and then some things I'm going to try and surprise him with. So awesome. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, Nicholas Hunziger wait. in that chair when we return. More to come right after this. All right. <laughs> time to get back to the old thing here. <laughs> oh, this week. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's been a fun one. All right, everybody, we are back. We are sitting here with Mr. Nicholas Hunziger. Hello, my friend. How are you, brother? Make sure you're comfortable. Get that wherever you. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> testing, testing, making sure that the audio works. <laughs> it was a chore yesterday, brother. Oh, how you doing, man? All right. You know. Huh? <laughs> same old, same old, same old. What's going on with you? Oh, my chatty Get some friend. Of stuff out of the way. What's going on? What's not going on? What's, yeah. Um, well, I. Um, I don't know where to start. I know. We have okay. lots of show and tell to do today, right? <laughs> We're jumping right into show and tell. <laughs> Burning through all the material. All right, um, I'll start with this. Um, I j- couldn't help but note. Oh, you're not. Wor- were you? Did I? Oh, okay. <laughs> I noticed we were all wearing the same shoes, at least Almost. somewhat. Lots of green. Right. There we go. I forget. You always do the two, don't you? Uh, yeah, that started with um, Mike Brewer's wife, Michelle Brewer. I she think. started that? Yeah. And then Mike. And then Hilarious. now we're doing it. Now uh, is that simply to showcase more yes. uh, product, yes. of course? It's yeah, like, of course. It's like people who, who have watch companies wear two watches. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it over here? It's <laughs> funny. Uh, you just gave uh, Mrs. Ryan just got a whole bunch of boxes of new shit. I told Is that Heather entirely I'm so new stuff? entirely possible. No, she, I told I Heather she I'm terrified it. of ruining stuff because my feet don't work, so I run oh, into stuff all the time. So she and gave you spares. Yeah, yeah. I think she got a refill. <laughs> it's a refill. so awesome. You guys are amazing, that's, but that's like amazing. that's bit in my panic all the time. Is I'm a reset friend. I'm gonna bump into stuff, and I drop. There was icing on your cake one day that wasn't icing, and it got on my shoe. Like it was a whole nightmare. <laughs> I had a cake <laughs> for your birthday. I know. Where was I? You did not come to Breakfast Club oh, okay. that day. Oh, somebody else get. Yeah, they made, that somebody made us a beautiful cake. Yeah, yeah but lovely. it wasn't icing. The cake was great, but oh. what was on my shoe? Well, 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 anyway, why do we have three cups here? I think that's yours. <laughs> yeah, but these are both of these are yours. Both of these are mine. That's yours. Oh wow. Okay. Well, this one's. Co- if you want to know, this one's coffee, and that one's water. Separate but equal. <laughs> Do I get two cups too? If you want, no, you don't. Do you drink coffee? No, I've never seen you drink. coffee. I can't drink coffee because of the caffeine. Because makes my hands jitter. Oh, it's not good for painting. It makes you less of a fine artist. Well, uh, th- some fine. of it is uh, my hands just shake more with caffeine. I think everybody, right? Or is it uh, that you get? J- yeah, you get jittery you if you get don't have it. Then jittery, you need it. Yeah. yeah, and just in general. And I didn't want to be dependent on it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a dick! <laughs> Work that in. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like you though. That like automatic behavior for other people are optional to like be like no, I'm not gonna hiccup. And you're oh, like yeah, no, yesterday. I don't want caffeine. Like <laughs> you guys just make decisions and like you're really good at sticking. You're gonna to have that. a headache for three days or something. That'd yeah, that's never, very daunting to ever, some people. <laughs> really? Sure. Like, oh, I mean, quitting drinking is daunting to some people. We just decided to stop one. Totally, day. but like no one can figure out how I get by on decaf all the time. Like, it's just <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mister, let's see. I've got a whole card for you. What is new in the painting world? Um, what's new? Uh, well, can, I started... we talk about, can we talk about some of the trials you've gone through in the painting world lately? Um, what trials? Data loss and computer crashes and oh, stuff. Oh, right, we right, right. Hit, yes. we're, in, we're in the sure. same boat Yeah, here. well, I mean, it seems to be something going around. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Apple. <laughs> I, my Just put it in the cloud, they say. Um, <laughs> it's perfectly yeah, safe. So, <laughs> um, the cloud and my hard drive crashed at the same time. <sighs> so we lost about, tw- uh, about 12 months worth of files. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. that's and a lot. Gone. Yes. Okie doke. They're all gone. <laughs> so that's back to the old, forgive the term, but back to the old drawing board. board um, right? Well, I, I still have the raw files, like, you know, of the paintings, because once, before they leave the studio, we take... Uh, we photograph everything. Oh, okay. So, but you still have to go back into the raw files and color correct everything and separate, you know, all the layers if it goes on a shirt or something. So, oh wow, but that's, I, I, that's it didn't just even occur to me the work you were work. I, in my yeah. mind, I'm thinking of oh, he before you paint, you sketch on the computer, you come up with all the oh, I thought well, it was the sketches all of are that gone work. too. Of course but, they are. I mean, you know, I'm not going to recreate sketches because the painting that leads the, to the the painting so the painting is now you know with a client or wherever it is but the painting is now the most original form of that art yes anything predating the painting's gone correct it's kind of wild yeah but i mean that's how it usually was or is i mean in general so everything you don't, else. you don't care when that type of thing if if, if only the sketches and the predated work was lost it would be less of a big yeah, deal no, i wouldn't really care to be honest i mean 
I've had paintings dis not disappear, but they were damaged in transit or something. And so now they only exist as... Oh, the digital. You know, the, yeah, the digital you have. saves it. Sa I mean, saved it. That's wow. the only thing that's left. That's pretty cool. That You're creating a new history by I guess, having yeah. both. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's, to me, it's just, you know, because of the business with that, because we translate the paintings to other stuff. So at some point, everything gets archived. Did you always, uh, did you, hmm, I don't know where to start this. How far into your artistry did you get into the computer element of it, like the digital drawing and the Cintiq um, and all that stuff? You know, I mean, I, I was always I somewhat I assume you started versed. with a pencil and paper like most people. Yeah, I still do now. Okay. I still have, you know, and I still sketch in the mornings just with ballpoint pen and, and paper just to practice ellipses and things like that and straight lines. Um, Perfect circles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you look at, you know, if you go to my desk now, it just looks like, you know, sketches of the range person because it's just <laughs> circles <laughs> circles circles all ellipses and yes play and makes, inside of a circle there's more a ellipses boy. you know and then you have to kind of you know <laughs> move the ellipse and you know all that kind of <laughs> different angles so. you do you're doing that freehand though instead of like yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, with yeah. the little stencil no 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 the just freehanded that's yeah, cool yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of kind of to train muscle memory yes yeah um, when I was a so, kid, the math teacher, she would just draw a circle. She'd stand next to the, uh, oh, let's see if I can do this here. You do a wide shot. She would just go stand next to the wall and go, make a perfect circle. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> she would just whoop with the chalk in her hand right next right, to the Right, right. Mrs. Sweet. I'm sorry, even though she's still alive. Mrs. Sweet, seventh grade math teacher. You ever do that, um, Nicholas? No. Oh, no, shit. Never. All right. Um, yeah, so to answer the question, you know, I, I got, I get into computer. I mean, I've always kind of known Photoshop. Um, and Illustrator, you know, all these, uh, what, what is it, InDesign and Quark Express, all these things just because of Are those all versions of the same thing? Those no, are these are drawing. different usually. No, I, actually, I don't really draw on a computer that much. Oh. I, I sketch by hand, I scan it in, and then I clean it up on the computer. Oh, interesting. And it's so much, it's a hybrid. It's, it's you know, the, to, to me, the computer is like a tool. It's like a pencil or an eraser. And let's say I have a painting, and I think, okay... Well, this is purple, but what would it look like if the background were black instead of purple? Well, a new sketch, I would have to do it again and then put in purple. Well, on a computer, you just scan it in, and it takes you two minutes to look at it, and then you can go, nah, it doesn't work. But right. at least that gives me the option yeah. fairly quickly. Or I say, or oh, change what? that saturation yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right. You know? So it's really more like to to explore options once you have something that you like. And then you do it by hand, right? You like Well, you once it goes on a painting, then yeah. I have a little sketch and I transfer that to the That's painting. a really cool way to use pencil on the giant technology. Oh, sorry. No, it's just the neat interaction of the two. Agreed. Right. Pe pencil on the canvas first and then uh, pencil or chalk. Oh, chalk. Sure. Either one. Hmm. Wow. It's cuz a lot of times nowadays I just start with, you know, like let's say the painting is um, blue. I would just start with a completely blue canvas, and then everything goes on top. I it's mean, I, think I, brought you I was going to say it's yeah. interesting that you would say that because that's the one I was thinking I was seeing in progress was the Mulholland right, car. Right, right, right. And I think we've got a picture of that somewhere here. Uh, this one here. There we go. That's oh, so there's cool. you driving the car too. Yes, that's, up on that, Mulholland. That, that came first, Mulholland on Mulholland. <laughs> Love it. And then yeah, so you can see a little bit of the of the progress of um, you know on the bottom right. So the very first two things I did on this painting would be the orange because that's where in the end you have reverse it out because orange on top of blue doesn't look as good as blue on top of orange. So you make sure the orange is down and then yes. paint the blue all around and it. And so you can see how, you know, it's kind of like a rough version of the singer mm -hmm. badge and then on top the Mulholland script. So that comes first and everything gets blue. And then um, in this particular case, I actually ended up putting the orange uh, Mulholland uh, the road goes on top of the blue, so it's not always cut in stone. Sure, uh, but nobody would know that had you not given it. Um, no, it just you no, know, maybe takes two coats versus one. Sure, that kind of thing. That's very cool, though. Uh, I love that car, uh, and I love that painting. Thank you. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know if it's just because we were there when you were doing it. Right. You right. came in at the shop uh, we visited a few times yes. when while that was in progress, right. and then seeing it done, of course. Uh, are you doing more work with Singer? Can we say anything with that? Um, that? We're maybe, talking. Maybe in the future. We're talking. That would be awesome. I would love to see that. I think uh, I think that that would be a. Well, it's not my place to say, but I personally think that that would be a neat 
accessory to someone to a, a, someone who is already purchasing a singer yeah. having a f- piece of fine art of their car to go with their car. I mean, it just sort of like I was thinking that I mean, when I no saw you for me. It, no and no the car, like it just makes so much sense. It's like a timestamp when you're checking all the boxes for all the things you want. Right. I mean, like that's I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no stake at singer, but that just makes makes sense to me. Um, all right, so that's what's going on. But well, what are you working on lately, though? Painting? Um, no, I've started painting. Uh, I got my hands on a on a handful of nine seventeen uh, K hoods. So they are OEM original mold hoods. Um, I can't get that's that with many the cutout in the front for the uh, yes for, for, the, air, for the oil there you go. cooler. Um, obviously, I can't or extractor, so I can't get that many of them. Obviously, I don't but, have pictures of that, right? Um, no, I think did. you do. Uh, I did send you that. Really? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, I don't think I have it. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, yeah, so I started painting on um, on actual nine seventeen hoods. So uh, is that a, oil can't? No, I mean, oil. always can't. Uh, sorry. St- oh, oh, you're acrylic. acrylic. Yeah. Always acrylic. Yes. How does that work? Do you have to prime the thing first um, to you know, take? Or you can't just go on raw metal, can you? No, it's fiberglass. Oh, really? Yeah, the whole car oh, is fiberglass. Yes. Wow. But even so, it's... God, um, so much sense. Uh, I've roughed it up just a little bit with maybe like 8,000. Well, now knowing you can, yeah, sure. Yeah, That's, and that then... That makes it a little easier. Um, 8,000 what? Oh, uh, sorry. Grit. Grit. 8,000 grit. The sandpaper? Yes. Okay. And then... Um, awesome. Put down a couple of coats of, of paint, but I just do it by hand. Uh, you mean just a base coat of something? Yes. To, to but, you know, interestingly, interestingly enough, that's some of the cars were painted by hand. Oh, really? As well. Yeah, like this car was painted by hand. There was no spray gun. The hippie. Yeah. That's awesome. They just taped really? it off. And they Honestly, painted that kind of makes sense. With painted that it in the, in, in the courtyard. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Uh, same with the pink pig. Same with the no martini. Kidding? Yeah, the martini, the long tail, they were painted by hand. There was no The spray martini gun. car was painted by hand? Uh-huh. For the me, long tail. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, neat. All the best ones that like that that are somehow unreplicatable, it's because they're imperfect. Because right. they were that's done kinda, by hand. And now, like, nowadays really a lot of them get, you know, over restored kind of and it, it's like two stages. Because one super guy does paint. it, makes the file, and then everybody prints out from the same fucking thing. Kinda or or just the application of it, you know. Because if you see a lot of clear on top and you know that just didn't exist because mm-hmm. it was really you know like the different colored noses the the, the history of that of that was really just for identification, identification. Purposes. i learned that i think through you yeah because really they would, yeah because you know when you they know, would go to practice like an orange or a, or a blue hood just a yeah. little bit there yeah so you would go to practice and you would have five white cars and they would come by and then uh Piech, he was back in germany looking at the film and you couldn't really tell which car is which so they would just so paint the nose real quick, you know, just put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, and like, some green, and whatever. That putting, makes so much sense. Putting some red yarn on your luggage at the <laughs> yeah, conveyor belt, Yeah, you pretty know, much. That was pretty much it. it. So when the car came by, they could tell. For oh, racing, okay. when it came by racing. Yeah. That or is in practice. Because so, they're all you know. just coming around. Oh, it's a white car. Is that our guy? Is that right. their guy? Whose guy is that? That makes so much sense. Yeah. So that was pretty much, you know. I, it's so simple. I love right. that. Right. Yeah, it's very pragmatic. So along those lines... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm just kind of exploring the, the different mediums because I'm also still working on 25 hoods because you know I remember I did that hood painting on the rear hood of a car, mm-hmm. so I'm doing 25 of those, um, I'm doing about five 917 hoods. Are all of these things in progress at all times? Is that kind uh, of like yes. oh, this is just no? It's always in progress. Wow. I mean, once they're done, they're done. But <laughs> no, yeah, they sure, can. sure. But you always have multiple. All that stuff's just kind of multiple lingering. projects. Well, oh, you yeah, know yeah, how yeah. I am. I'm more like I'm going to work on this until it's done, and then oh, I'm move so on. Oh, so so no, no, I always have about thirty things going on. Wow. Which is what are the very, hoods for again that you're painting? I forget. Uh, to sell. It's just like right, but like it goes. It's not a kit. It's like a your oh from a Porsche nine seventeen. Yeah. You mean from an oh, old race car? It's from a race car. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, from a it's from this car except the short tail version, and then the front uh, panel come lifts off. Okie doke. Now I know. Right. <laughs> so it's a weird. It's not flat. It's got it's got weird contours the to it and stuff. Ridges. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's neat. It's super neat. Did you have you done that before? Um, like painted no. on the car parts. Because no, we've had no. art car conversations before. Yeah, we... no, I haven't really painted on car parts that much. It's always been on canvas because, you know, it's just been... I think the hoods are a neat idea, yeah, especially so because those different. are historic, real hoods, too. Yeah, I it's, think If that's anything, are you, are you taking value away from those historic... Well, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can argue about that. 
I actually have one hood that I got, which was off a Carrera 6. So I thought it was a 906 hood. And I thought it was a, a, um, a repro hood. This is where I'm naive. Is the Carrera 6 far more rare? And 906? More? No, 906. They made more 906s than 910s. Oh, okay. And it was a car that was sold to privateers, whereas the 917 was, I mean, was also sold to privateers, but they only made 25 cars, whereas 906s, I think they made... 50 cars in the first run oh wow and then another second run hmm. um so i thought i bought a 906 hood off off of um maybe a reproduction hood and then as we looked at it it turned out it's real and not only is it real it came off of a factory 910 that ran at the nurburgring in 67 and then the car was converted into a 910 spider and it had this really cool um psychedelic pop art paint uh, scheme or livery on, on the entire car. Hmm. So I'm kind of recreating that oh. on this particular hood that we found out actually belonged on that car in 1970, uh, 72. So that one is, that one's almost going to be more of an homage to what it was originally yes, because of because its history. Because that's the actual, Well, you that's, know, that's really it's, awesome. It's 910, it's 910 number... Are you going to sell that 26? one or is that when you're going to keep that you know, one in a collection? I'm kind of on that, the fence. That's <laughs> just because, you know, how many times do you... you also, know? what you're doing with it, it will then look like what it actually is right. again. Well, not... I mean, I'm going to paint the entire car on top of it. Not what it... Not just the section. Oh, I see. No, anyone can do that. <laughs> I think there's people selling doors like that, you know, with numbers on them. Or, right, but this is the real one. Yeah, yeah. True. true. <laughs> I'd say you both should swap what you're doing. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it'll be cool once it's done. So. For sure. Everything you do is cool. Uh, all right. Well, racing-wise, let's get into racing. What's um, been going on no, with you I lately? Have, you know, I'm supposed to be racing this week, actually. I had a seed in uh, Daytona. Daytona yeah. Classics? Um, but um, Everybody we know is there, except I know, for right? you. <laughs> I know, right? That's why I'm here. We did a Monday show <laughs> because Rod and Amy were leaving, you know, okay. in, in hours after that. Right, right. Um, I think Eric, I just, I, Erica Skirmonts, you know, he's right, down there too. Sure. No, I just really wanted to be here. Thanks, brother. <laughs> you gave up your seat. <laughs> what uh, were you going to drive? You're adorable. I was going to drive a 68 911 Trans Am car. Oh, cool. Yeah. What happened? Um, I think the engine blew for the second time this year. Oh. The second time because during shakedown, uh, sh gear, gear linkage broke. So the uh, engine over revved again. Mm. So they, they had to tear it down again. That sucks. Yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, next time. Do you? How does that? How does that work? Well, I was getting an education. We were getting an education the other day from Rod Emery. I didn't realize that uh, with the classics that they run multiple cars, or you can run multiple you can cars. Multi you so, can, oh, yes. so not everybody does. Well, I mean, how big's your wallet? <laughs> well, I don't really know. It's more of a rule thing for me. Like in a regular twenty-four hour Daytona, yes. you got to run the same fucking car. You can have oh, different right, drivers, right. but you got to run the same car. Yeah, no, in this classic, they have, said you can have. You, of course, you can. Yeah, I mean, there's guys in Monterey who, during the historic, or what it's called, the Motorsports Reunion, they might run six cars. I think Pat drove seven cars in one day, or six cars. That's amazing. And Rod was saying the same thing. Yeah. he had a whole list of cars. Right. Um, so. Were you going to be a part of a team like that type of thing? No, or was it going to be um, one car and you and multiple? Car. I don't, and you the whole time or you and multiple? No, you, you shared a ride because, you know, it's a, I mean, it's not a true 24-hour race anymore, but it's longer than sprint races. Like he was saying can, it's still two to two, but they, yeah. it's sectioned out basically. Right, and you, you change seats. I mean, change drivers in between. Uh, well, so who were you going to go with? Uh, it's, it's a friend of mine. Oh, okay. Somebody who owns the car. Got it. Somebody without a name. Copy. <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> he was being coy. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't know. Uh, no, it's my buddy Kai. I mean, I don't, I don't think. Does anybody know Kai? Would anyone know um, the car? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a Trans Am car. It has Trans Am history. Um, he's he raced in ALMS. He raced prototypes. He raced GT3 R. Uh, he raced a 911 GT3 R, like a 2000. Model. Is this somebody that you have a seat with? Sometimes, I mean. Uh, well, we were hoping this this year. I think we scheduled like three or four different races. Oh, okay. So had it not been for some, yeah. some things that came up, you right, would have... Right. Oh, okay. So cool. That was kind of the plan, but well, next time. I, I know this is kind of long, but I'd like to play at least a portion of it. Uh, I know you from driving this Lotus here. Can right. We, can that we play this from, clip? when sure. I, It's kind of long, but we can talk through it if you want. Oh, and, we can. Uh, okay. Um, uh, um, I think we should probably watch it at least to the <laughs> through to the end because of what happens, right? Sure. All right. Mm, let's see, Nicholas Hunziger in his Lotus. What year is this? Car? This is in 69 Lotus 51. Awesome. Or 68. Roll it out.
So that was actually the pre-reunion, and then the weekend after, we fixed the drive shafts in one week. We actually made two of them, and uh, we were able to race on uh, for the actual reunion. Okay. Yeah. So w- w- uh, there was a date on there, but when was that? That was the pre-reunion, so that was right, uh, that's the week ago. before August. The oh, recently? Yeah. I oh, mean, wow. Recent. I mean, it's always the second, th- second and third week in August for Monterey. Wow. Uh, so is that the most recent racing you've done then? Uh, y- yes. Yeah. Supposed to do a lot, bunch of other stuff, but we've just been too busy lately. So. Yeah, and technical difficulties and everything else. <laughs> I know stuff comes up. I just I think it's so great that you're so active. Um, um, well, plus uh, on Sunday, I broke my gearbox in the last race as well. It, wait, wait Again. so you raced on Sunday? Well, this was the weekend before. <laughs> Right, where I broke the two half shafts, and then you go into the race the week after. Oh, the Sunday of that yes. same week. Um, okay. And then in the actual race at the end, I lost my gearbox, and I only had, I think, one or two gears. I only had third gear, I think. That's not going to do it. Yeah, so I lost <laughs> two places. <laughs> That's but amazing. Ooh. Yeah. Where else do you race that car? You go anywhere this with one, it? Well, this one's been to Willow Springs, um, Sonoma, which I like a lot. Sonoma is a great track. Sears Point. 
Yes. When I was a kid, Sears Point. Uh, I never visited it. I never, I never actually went there. Oh, was, really? Well, no, I was oh, on the wow. other side of you the country. Should, but right. No, it's a great, great, great track. Yeah. Um, How long's that one? You know, a, in terms of this, like, there's a variety how many of different miles? courses. Oh, uh, what do you do? It's then? a little bit longer than than. Okay. It's maybe. But there's multiple configurations too. It's multiple configurations. Yeah, I think we run the indie one, so you you go through the carousel and the whole gotcha. thing in the back back straight. So mm. no, it's a, a uh, and great these are available for you to drive on Forza Seven. Here on, <laughs> and on any of your Xboxes. <laughs> I'll do it myself then. No, I'm just saying it's fun because Laguna Seca, you can drive that one. Lime Rock, that's where yeah. I spent a lot of laps on Lime Rock. I think I've done that one on the game. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Um, do Willow you do Springs. that Sim stuff? You know, I've done it a little bit. I, I, you I have still, a rig though, don't you? No, I, I built myself one a long time ago. Oh, that's what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We but, got, went down the YouTube train the other day and I right. started looking at these guys building their own rigs. Yeah, I might just, you know, I just need it. I don't need like a moving seat or anything. It's really more for. I thought the same thing, but then I looked at Rod Emery's the other day, and I thought that's exactly what I need. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's the whole the whole. Right, rig. right. It's and pretty then you cool. Get the apparatus, which I, I said, think I never the, want those stupid goggles. Yeah, I said, the I never goggles want are pretty that. cool. They're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the court. <laughs> he put something on Instagram of like a rep. Like that's what I'm talking and about. And it's awesome. Yeah. Like I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Waste a lot of time in there. So. I mean, one of those Practicing. things I think is probably hundred thousand dollars because it's a real, real like you know the, yeah, the whole apparatus. If, yeah, I think that's like them. fifty grand or so, maybe something. Ten thousand like hours. You <laughs> might as well be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, but if you, I would imagine it probably is pretty good to keep your chops. You know. Yeah, I think for some things it's it's pretty good. You know, you don't get reflexes. The, yeah, and nowadays you know even like threshold braking and things like that oh. um, because now they actually have. Um, to have actual pistons in the brake pedal, so it's so not just really a spring. It. Yeah, it's, it actually compresses a fluid. Oh, and they, they and then they convert that action into uh, you that's know the a high digital. Line. Yeah, that's, that's like the good a, part. Yeah, um, I can't think of the name of the that used to do when I was looking into like this Fanatec. Class. That's it, Fanatec. Yeah. Um, so, Fanatec. Yeah. So th- it's gotten. Come Are they still in business? Yeah. So it's come a long way in terms of. You know, like your PlayStation wheel that you used to buy. It was the buy. Logitech G25 <laughs> right, and the yeah. G27 or whatever, and I think people are still using that thing. I'm sure they are. I mean, it works for, you know, if you play PlayStation. I mean, I mean, like, I think they're still putting that into new apparatus. Is there a new rig? Oh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really... I. I know next to nothing about these things. So. Oh, man, I thought you were going to be my sim buddy. I thought we were going to get these and fire them up. And <laughs> One day when we're in a studio and we have room and everything, I totally want to have a sim set up no, it'd so be we great. can do like, you know, top, you, la- top Gear laps. Yeah, you, you could do... Uh, uh, hot laps or fastest. Right, 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 yeah. I can't wait till you guys make this space. <laughs> you, <I'll laughs> Just like, get that. the fuck out of the house. <laughs> no, I can't wait to use the sim that you guys made. I was going to say, you're going to be there. Y- yeah. Joe Rogan's got the pool table and the gym and everything else and the archery and all that. Do what you can. I can get in maybe sims we need and play. Go kart track, maybe electric yeah. go kart track. That might be I'd fun. take a sim. Really over that? Yeah, I like both. Really? I don't want either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like both. <laughs> like we need to get a partnership with K One or something, and that way we can just go over there. K One, I love you guys, <laughs> and um, we've spent Valentine's Day there a couple. We did, yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah, but it was super fun. Oh, you're super fun. Um, John Benton. John Benton is in everyone's thoughts and everything oh, going right. on yeah, these days. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, we, he's... he's the, the Benton family over there are struggling with their recent loss and the catastrophic fire they had. Um, you, uh, we were having a nice conversation the other day, and then I know you got a hold of John Benton. Are you guys able to put something together there? Yes, we're going we're gonna to do a... Or I'm going to... We are going to. I'm going to paint a... <laughs> one of his cars we're going to make a poster awesome and i think we're going to throw it up on his gofundme so when you you know we haven't worked out the details yet beautiful but whatever if you donate x amount you'll get the you get a free poster i love it That's so fantastic. hopefully it'll helps out you know because it's a great idea it's not going to be raising millions but you know every i think little e- every little bit helps they're, because yeah, they're insured they have you know what i mean there's tons of people working on this but there are so many things that you just right don't even think about. well i mean I-, I talked to john yesterday and he was kind of funny because you know if, i mean you do have insurance and even if you have great insurance but it's not like as soon as you know the fire's done smoldering that someone walks up to you and yeah. goes oh mr benton where can i give you money <laughs> yeah it's right you have to fight for every right. dollar so um and he's going through that so it's 
you know, I don't envy him. Wh while trying to run a business at the same time. Right. I mean, that's the tough part because, you know, his overhead doesn't stop. He still has employees. But huge uh, salute and kudos to you well, for, for stepping up and doing something. It's very little. In, 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 I love in, you in for helping terms, in any you know, way. We love like watching that's the whole community come out. Everyone's trying to figure out what to do about so many things. So right. I love that you're doing something. Well, you know, just pretty cool. it was just a really... You don't take thought. credit that well either, so... No. We'll just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do something great first. Um, and uh, uh, it'll be, we don't know what the artwork will be yet because you've got to dream um, it up first. You know, I'm thinking maybe his 912 that kind of looks like the, like the Le Mans car with the Le Mans livery, you know, the white oh, car. yeah. Yeah. Because he's kind of known for 912, so yeah. we thought maybe a 912 would cool. be good. Absolutely. So. You're awesome with that. We'll see. Um, let's see. P-E-C-L-A. Got to talk about that. This is PECLA week, third anniversary. Yeah. You're always involved over there. Not, no, just lately, I think. Oh, okay. It's starting to well, stuff, yeah. That's all our involvement. Oh, okay. Lately, right, so, right. Uh, always. <laughs> we've got a lot of friends over there, certainly, right. with G.I. Jen and um, Eric and all yeah. people who contribute and help over there, from Jeff Ward to Lisa Taylor, et cetera. Right. Um, no. I was a fan of yours, by the way. Lisa she Taylor? Said, she said hello. She's very she nice. She very nice lady. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Tom mm -hmm. Writings. Um, yeah, so we're for PECLA for the third anniversary. I think I brought this, what we're actually doing. Yeah, you want me, uh, sh should I do the poster first? Sure. So we're right, going to release a special. Golf livery. Yes, because they're going to have that car there. I love it. Really? That yeah, car is going to be yeah, displayed you know, there? Uh, not this particular one, but the 917K cool. that they have um, Very cool. in golf blue. And, um, yeah, so we're going to do a special <coughs> poster. And then you want to see the shirt? Uh, and this one's going to be limited to 917. Oh, of course. The poster is. Oh, the, hang on. I'm back to the poster. Whoop. 917 of those. Yes. And, uh, so you got to get there early. <laughs> yes, get there early <laughs> because uh, they'll, they're will they giving them away. Yeah. So. And then this T-shirt. And that's T-shirt. That's going to be, be for sale, um, for sale awesome. uh, starting Saturday as well. Love it. Love it. Very cool. All the anniversary stuff. Are you signing yes. posters? Yes, we'll be there to sign. Cool. For that sure. was uh, really fun to watch yeah. last time. You probably oh, don't ever get to see yourself, you know what I mean, like doing it. It was really neat to see the line. <laughs> uh, the 200 I mean, people. <laughs> there were easily 200 people. Well, we ran, out, I, I did, we ran out of 200 yeah, posters. So. Yeah. Yeah. I it felt really bad cool, for though, the people. Because you were our friend. And it was like, oh, look at all those people lining up to go. <laughs> Get it was the signature neat. of our friend. It was really. Uh, cool. It's the free poster. It's not the signature. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Take credit Either better. Way. I think. I think if you. I think in this country. Well, I just say in this country. But I think if if you if you gave away radioactive waste in a plastic bag, and it was free, I'm pretty sure you could pe get people to line up. I'll invest in that. We got to get there. <laughs> trying to get rid of radioactive waste, right? <laughs> not anymore. Oh. All right. People like what they like. They like. No, you. I mean, listen. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be f flipping about it. I, it's 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 very very nice to you know meet that many people I in think that short a time span. Yeah, I think it's um, amazing. I mean, we've seen you get swarmed at other places before, but like just to do the signing, where I don't know, it was a place that we were so familiar with. You know what I mean? When you're at a at an event at a racetrack or something, and you see and it's going on everywhere. Th that was the only one going on in the middle of everything. Right. So but it no, it's front. it's it's nice and you know the that was, folks that, that was the it wasn't paint to sample. What was it? It was a uh, OG GT day. celebration. Yeah, um, and yeah, I mean you know I think Pecla is kind of a I mean, obviously it's a unique space just in terms of you know kind of like like this giant clubhouse for all things Porsche. You do a lot of stuff there, but have you been on the track? Have you done any? Have you been um, through you know, any of the I walked courses? the track. I haven't driven the track. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I walked it because, um, you know, just because we're working on some other things. So we kind of took a look from every angle. Scouting. Yes. Um, but no, actually, I haven't driven it. Are you going to? I don't know. If someone gives me a car, I'll drive it. Well, are we, uh, <laughs> are you doing the, uh, well, I didn't think we were, but I think we are. Uh, are, are you doing the parade lap on Saturday? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I think you might be. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is yeah. how it goes. <laughs> if someone puts me in a car, I'll drive it. <laughs> well, I think it'll be one of your cars. Oh, you okay. Bring. Well, then I'll drive that. Hurry and lap. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's not an electric car. Well, I shouldn't say that. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> the new one coming out. There's going to be one there now, yeah. finally. Oh, my goodness. I think I, just, we, I, th I, I don't know if we're supposed to say that or not. I keep saying it. I said it what, with Lisa Taylor. The, the, There's going to be, yeah, for anyone who hasn't seen the Taycan, there'll be a Taycan there the, for people to check out. The new Dyson. Supposedly. Is that, <laughs> is that your take on it? 
I just I just cannot get excited about a washing machine on wheels. And is that is that your feeling the on the electric yes, cars? It's like a toaster. None of the th- yeah okay. Hmm. It's you know it's I think it's great. I get the appliance reference right. for sure. I think it's great for people who don't like cars. It's a non-car. And then everybody who is a car guy who then goes and drives one, they're like, oh. Not you? Yeah, it's you just know? not for me, yeah. But you don't know that yet, or you've already just made the well, decision. Well, I've driven to, No, I mean, to me, what makes a car interesting is, you know, the feedback, the noise, the sound. I agree you with know, you on all this. The vibration. It looks like, and what, you know, what you call NVH, noise, vibration, harshness. To me, yeah. that's kind of... The visceral the heart sensation, and yes. and yeah. connection and you kind of to the take, car. It you know, like. it's like, oh, here's cake. It has no taste. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I eat cake? Yeah, uh, I understand um, that fully. And I, I don't necessarily, you know, this is part of a bigger conversation, but I don't necessarily agree that, you know, electricity is the best thing to carry around with you to propel a car. I think it makes about as much sense as running your iPhone on on, on gasoline. That's just. My personal opinion. I don't disagree with that one, too, especially now that you see the news uh, stories of, I don't want to say any particular mark, but electric cars uh, just going up in parking garages and whatever for no right. reason, just yeah. spontaneously. Well, not just that, but I mean, you know, just... I mean, think, it's a battery leak or whatever that causes right. it. It's but I mean, nothing. just think about, I think, you know, just to get the, pa- the electricity from the power plant to your socket, you lose about 25% in heat, noise. That's the efficiency? Yeah. So, you know, if I had a tanker truck and every time I delivered fuel 25. to you. And <laughs> that's like an SR-71. <laughs> right, yeah. And I go, what happened? Like, well, that's, just, that's part of the system. You know? That's the SR-71. <laughs> right, you know. You know, that, that, that I don't even know if they fly that thing anymore, but it was I like the world's so. fastest plane or whatever at one point on the movie, The Blackbird. Yeah. And, and while it was on the ground getting ready to take off they'd have to refuel the thing over and over while it was sitting there because the fuel just seeps out it goes so fast there's so much shrinkage or whatever the tolerance no, it, it, is on it, the metal it, it, that it eventually there's so much friction that it expands that's what it is and that that actually expands the joints and that seals the gas tank but when you're standing on on but the tarmac like a race car that's only when you're there doing what you do so you so they would fuel up the the plane get it up in the air and then the first thing they would do is fuel it up and then then you go and but then once you get going it the heat, the friction of the air expands to. That's how it works. Fuselage, but if you yeah. see one sitting on yeah, the fucking tarmac, what? Well, it's fuel, fuel just spewing out of, <laughs> out of it. Like yeah. it's broken everywhere. Out novice, of cracks. Novice, <laughs> admittedly. But this sounds horribly inefficient. Does, yes. Does, well, that's his point. That's why I brought it well, up. Well, that's kind of a bit like. So it's kind of the same thing. Well, okay. I mean, you know, if I. It's, you, that, hence my opinion. point of, you know, if you lose 25 percent every anything. time you deliver something to it's me a that's great not a visual. great system it's a great right. visual <laughs> that's so funny i mean you know just just this is just my beef with electric cars in general you know electricity is not the greatest thing to put in the bucket and take it from a to b it just is, is that how they're carrying electricity these days bucket brigade? bucket <laughs> no but i mean you know it's, that's what it comes down to with electric cars it's always the battery right? went up the hill to fetch a pail of electricity <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I could go on and on about every time you use a gas tank in an electric car, it gets a little bit smaller. My gas tank stays the same size. Oh, I see your yeah. point because the batteries lose yeah. their. Ch- yeah, that's interesting. And my car gets lighter as I get, as I burn off the fuel. Battery yeah. stays the same way. It's true. You I use mean, more and more so many, fuel, actually. Yeah. yeah. More and you know, more so energy. That's just, crazy. I don't think of it. Is it like an that's iPhone? An ar- that's an artist deconstructing <laughs> it, though. Yeah. So that's why yes, I'm just. It is. It's yes, exactly like ac- an iPhone. Yes, sure. That, that's exactly what it's like. So um, that's why. And all know. batteries are like that. Yeah, that's just the nature of it. I think we're all, some of us, myself included, are just becoming aware of things like that. I think the future of these electric cars is in capacitors. I don't know why I keep saying <laughs> that. It's not going to be in the batteries. They're going to figure out a way to do it in capacitors because you can still store the energy in the capacitor. Right. What, what do you mean a capacitor? I like don't it? know. Oh, okay. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know how they work, but I know that I needed a bunch of them to build a time machine. <laughs> oh. okay. Okay. And then okay. I understand. I said, what the hell are these things anyway? The oh, flux it's capacitor. Like, people use them for their car stereos and stuff. You store, they store electricity. And I was like, you mean like a battery? And they're like, no. Like okay, so it's different. That's what the flux capacitor. Is. Oh well, that's <laughs> yes. But a also, around holds. the time machine, there are a bunch of capacitors all over the place on any circuit board. The capacitors yeah. are everywhere. What do you mean I around the time machine? You can't you can't say like uh, you mean around the time machine in the movie, not around any time machine. Around the time machine from the the movie, uh, the okay, DeLorean right, time right, right, machine. Right, right. There are red capacitors yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, on one side. It, there it. are blue no, on the I other side. No, I just thought you you know you said it like no around a time machine you have. Everybody knows this. Come on, everybody says. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everyone to have one in their garage. There was a time when it was that simple. Yeah, it certainly felt that way. Did you ever have, have you ever driven a DeLorean? Have you ever even had any interest? Because I know you know the family story. Yeah, quite well. no, thankfully I haven't. Thankfully. <laughs> you know I had a few of them, right? No, I know. <laughs> we were talking, wasn't it? It was you. We were just talking about the movie about yeah, recently, we were, right? Yes. D- d- you watched the Framing John DeLorean. I watched. I watched Framing. I watched the Pennybacker. Um, oh, I don't know that one. And then there's another one, Driven, that somebody just told yeah. us to watch. Have you seen that one? Mm, you know, I don't remember. Okay. I, I'm so bad with names. Oh, that's all right. Titles. But you saw the Alec Baldwin one. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. What'd you think? Um, you know, I think there were. It was interesting. They were pretty kind to him. I thought. I thought so too. I thought it was very, very, you know, fair, friendly, and fair. Well, yeah. Very um, fair to the family, I thought, yes, which for was sure. awesome. Right. Um, and, I, you know, I don't know how much people really know now, now you know, because it wasn't like in a time the of social have, media. The jokes have far superseded the, 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 the actual story, right. the actual lore. I was going to ask you what you knew going in, because I knew superficial things, but not the whole through uh, line. Okay. So no, I, I knew about, you know, you the did. implants and... That's you. You. I've still never heard that from anybody but you. Is that true? I. Th- that wasn't in the film. <laughs> oh wow! No, you no, were he had saying chin- it to yourself. He, no, while he watching had a, it. he had a chin implant. You know, you should you should see. I'm going to have to ask Cat about that. <laughs> okay. Because I totally believe you. Right. And I right. saw. I've, I've. Since you made the comment, right. I've certainly looked. But to me, it's it still no, he, looks like it could be weight and it feels weariness. like aging. It looks like different parts of his uh, life I, with stress. I, I, and he different really things. remade himself into this. You know, he kind of, I mean... But the timeline didn't work out for me, because in the timeline, when I thought you were talking about that, like, after GM, right? After that um, is when he, he was... Well, it was right when he was kind of, um, when he did the GTO, right? Yeah, that's what I mean, when he was yes. really climbing yeah, the yeah, ranks yeah. That and, was like, just, that, making who John DeLorean yeah, was going to be. that was the make, and that's why he constantly went to California. Yeah. You know, you're in oh, Detroit. Interesting. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, they had an office on Park Avenue, and the, right. and the plant was in Ireland, <laughs> Belfast. Oh, right. sorry, you're talking about no when he was in de- when he was a sh- sure, a GM. But just in general. Oh yeah, that yeah, was yeah. His that's way. the other one. That was sure, his way. sure, sure. Yeah, I'd never understood that. <laughs> but again, I think you know that's part of him, his salesmanship. I think, yeah, like kind of buying into this whole aura of. Let's just see. I've never done this before. I don't. I have no idea if she'll answer. Are, you, are we going to call her? So if she had an yeah, I'm yeah, just curious. We'll see. I mean, who, who, who knows who cares, it's right? It's an interesting facet of a story I didn't really know. And, who, and I have no idea if she'll answer or not. We'll see. This, uh, if this, if, 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 if who I think this is answers, it's going to be Catherine DeLorean, who's John DeLorean's daughter and a very good friend of mine and Mrs. Ryan's. I hate to make this about this, but I would love to get this to the bottom. You guys can hear that, right? Yeah. Please leave your message. Oh, shit. Oh. Ah, jeez. Well, we're on the air with Nicholas Hunziker. Mrs. Ryan's here. And we were talking about the Framing John DeLorean movie. And uh, gosh, you came up as well as a question that we just weren't sure about the answer to. Give me a call whenever, and I'll ask you <laughs> off the air. I <laughs> love you so much. Love Talk you. you. That was fun. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Had we gotten an answer, that wouldn't have been such a right. speed bump. <laughs> well, you know, it's live live TV, right? <laughs> I love that you know enough about it. About what? The whole story. Oh, the fact okay. that you actually followed it and, and have all of these inside uh Well, I mean, scoop, I think it's insights. all part of, um, you know, it's kind of automotive history, so it's kind of still in the ball, ballpark. Of yeah, you fire. also like stories that stand out that are a little different too you know like mavericks stuff like that yeah for we sure. talk about the, the, remind- the letterman deal with mike ovitz right right day. right yeah that kind of reminds well, me reverse of the process right 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 yeah we always <laughs> joke about that um let's see how about your art car the 996 is anything um, new with that or are you just so busy with other things no actually um you know um you may have seen me paint ant's car Yes, I did. Aunt Anne's dead. I don't have any pictures of that, but we um, so I painted the numbers on his car. Said. That's the car he just built the recently. Alpha. Yes, very cool. The red, uh, the red There's open wheel. Red, yeah, his you painted the one. numbers on that. Yeah, That's I mean, awesome. It's not a big deal, but so part of the art car is that he's going to build me a roll cage, the front part of the, like a club sport, a club sport roll cage oh, extension cool. in the front for the GT3. Yeah. Sweet. Very cool. So are you going to use the same Porsche Technic that's in the back, or are you going to do something uh, we, uh, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. Because um, 
I kind of think, well, you know, because the whole car that's is That's a bolt-in, isn't it? And if he's doing something yes. custom. Um, well, he, well, but he could still weld on um, a connector and then bolt it onto the connector. Oh, you sure, know, you sure. You just weld just on a tab. Yeah. So. Sweet. But I think, uh, yeah, I mean, keeping the back. Will you have to, like, step over? I mean, is that going to. Um, it's mean, not so much step over as that you have to. Um, because I remember when I drove the... You know the roll cage in the back? Imagine having that in front, too. You have one in the front. Yeah. There's no real Comes side protection. Stuff. You don't have side oh. protection on the bottom, but what happens is that you have the bar that comes down. Mm -hmm. And so when you get at, when you swing your legs out, you kind of have to bring your knees, knees to your in chest a little bit. Yep. in order to get out of the car. Up, so and, you, up and around. Yes, and then you have to you know, kind of fall out of the, 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 the really bolstered seat. So you look like a, an old man. <laughs> Kind of, you know, falling out so of the I'd car. So I'd be great. You already do, and then I know there's there's no graceful way in yeah, in or out. No. Well, I feel better then. That's yeah. just my everyday. He Heather hates that car because she says there's no there's no graceful way in or out. You know, just, you just but that's the seats that's more than the car, right? Means. It's everything. Yeah, it's low to the ground. <laughs> it's the seats. Um, I think the roll bar is going to make it worse. Oh, it, it like is going to make it worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to make it worse. Of course, but that's the whole point. You know. No. What? Um, <laughs> well, I didn't, I, in my mind, I never knew it was going to be like a full real race car. No, like, it, it, it won't. But the Club Sport, because I remember driving the GT3 RS Club Sport. I think at the time it was like one of two or three that were legally in the And you remember banging your knee and I'm like, I got to get that one thing. <laughs> yeah, and every time I got out of the car, I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. Like, but that makes it so great, you know, because that's, it kind of gives the car character. Because it's not because the whole not philosophy. Not wants to jump in and drive it. Well, I mean, to me, the whole philosophy about the car is that Porsche, you know, I mean, the GT3 R, you know, street version, is that they built this car, and they looked at it and they just go, oh, "This is just too much." And then huh. they came out with the RS, which was the softer version. Okay. And the R is has always been the harder version. Even like in '67, the R was kind of bare bones compared to an RS. Right. In RS, you had you could have you know electric windows if you wanted to. Right, because one's like you know, there's race, and then there's like you know race like. Oh. So I didn't know that so to me, to well, me, I don't think it literally means that, but I mean that was right. sort of right. It, right? it was like race and rent sport, you know, race sport. It's good for my head to know the difference. Like right. I genuinely so the, don't. The R is that. really back in '67. The R was the hardcore, basically. Okay. You know, barely street legal. Just getting by. Yes, you know, no sound deadening. I mean, there's not a single button. They ripped everything out. No headliner. Nothing. I love that. You know, bare metal. Super light. Every time something else starts creaking or rattling in our car, I just want to take it out. Lately. Right, it's right, the yeah. The headliner just, and the yeah. backside yeah, that I left in. I'm seriously, just I wait. want to come down to your right. shop and let's just start ripping shit out of it because I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so so to me, the, the whole philosophy of the car is that you kind of have this car that was factory built. They built one and they go, we, we can't sell 200 of these. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to clamper out of this thing and fall onto the floor That's every time the they get in there? Yeah. So to me, you know, when you get to that point, it's just kind of this fine line of like, well, it is pretty cool, but, you know. Yeah, no, I think it is pretty cool. Yeah. All so right, so you, you just sold me on sold. it. So, <laughs> yeah, Plus so Anne's going to... Yeah. Sorry? Anything club sport. Club sport, yeah, anything club sport, anything race, you know, that's kind of like the, the magic words. Yeah. I, I didn't put it in here. I wanted to, and I just forgot. I think maybe I'll post it later. But the picture, one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken ever was a quick snap I took of you over at Motorsport when you're sitting on the floor with, oh, the, uh, with, with the, the steering, with wheel. The steering <laughs> wheel in your hand. <laughs> Holy crow. I did it's the Toys R Us little uh, blurb. So funny. Yeah, GT3R. That's a fun car. It's good. That's a proper race car, the new, GT, the new R. GT2 RS Club Sport. No, that was the R. Oh, that was the R that you were in? Yeah, that's okay. the one that has the, the one I was in and liked was the Club Sport. Yeah, that's a, the track day special kind of. Yes, that's yeah. right. But you can actually <laughs> buy mine. <laughs> you can't buy yours. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dutch baby pancake? Are you a foodie? Oh. I think you're a foodie. <laughs> I think no. you're a closet foodie. I, I think it's Heather. I, I eat it. Heather is a foodie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Heather she, knows she's, what she's, she's doing. She's the one making all the crazy pancakes nowadays. So, <laughs> so when I when you post a Dutch baby pancake with best what wife a, ever, well, actually, did she really make that? Yeah, yeah, every time. Actually, I have another That's one. Amazing. I haven't posted it yet. The last one. On you know what I'm talking about? These no. beautiful, beautiful. On Monday, I mean, it looks like you're right off a of French uh, she uh, market made, or something. She made um, Japanese pancakes that are about the size of this cup and about this tall. So they rise. Oh. 
Biscuits. So, we call those awesome. biscuits. Yeah, where it I grew looks up. like a biscuit, but it's actually a pancake. And I think I'm going to get this wrong because I'm not paying attention, <laughs> even though it's explained to me. Um, <laughs> it's I think it's it's beaten egg whites. Oh, okay. Do so you get a meringue okay. out of the it? batter? Like, so yes, meringue. So that's why they rise. Hmm. And then before that, I think we had I had a I mean we. I'm the one eating. <laughs> well, that would make sense, though. That meringue could just go, yes. it just goes up. And then before that, I think I had, I'm going to get this wrong as well. I think it was either a Dutch, like little Dutch pancakes. They almost look like little um, profiteroles, but, you know, they're a little smaller. That's not that, the Dutch like, baby pancake. No, they had, like, they had some apple thing. And then before that, we had, <laughs> there, was a, there was a German pancake as well. It was all kinds of, you know, I think she's going like the, like the, all the different But countries. she makes these things. She and makes I, these. I am convinced each time that they're down at that waffle factory yeah. or whatever no, no, up no, no, at no. Arrowhead because the, the, it, it's not just that the food looks good. The presentation straight out of the food Yeah, network. no, it's it's great. And the, you should see the kitchen afterwards. <laughs> Disaster. It, it, oh, my. It's, Which, does she eat? She's not the eating them, right? The, these pancakes, she's not eating them, right? No, no, she's no. She's keto. She likes, losing weight. Yeah, no. She, she, well, she's, she's doing keto. keto right now, so she's not eating carbs, so I have <laughs> oh, to eat it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so no, she's so making I'm, pancakes that yeah. sound beautiful and delicious. Right. No, it's great. I mean, you know, <laughs> they're they're really, uh, so far, they've, they've all been really, really good. Oh, and you know what? Um, she made another one. I think it was a Japanese pancake as well. There was Japanese, German, Dutch. And then the late, the latest one was Japanese again because that's the one that that that, that, that you know that kind of well. Rose. And then all right, but then following that up with we came down for lunch the other day and we <laughs> ended up we said oh where do you want to go well this diner has great breakfast and we're thinking that's funny okay and then you wanted there was a certain breakfast there are you a breakfast guy are you a breakfast foodie no I just ha- I think I, you I might egg, be I had an egg white omelet. Yeah, but it was all fancy. It was beautiful. It had, yeah, no. you had peppers in there. It was red and green. It was all sorts of colors. Do you remember that? It, yeah, I do. I had, and I had a Denver omelet with egg whites, <laughs> no cheese, no onions. So, I mean, there's like three things in there. Yeah, you're right. The way you describe it now sounds very simple. But yeah. what arrived looked pretty fancy. It looked very fancy, and it was definitely breakfast, not lunch. So there's a distinction, I think, that, that needs to be made. Like, do you like breakfast over lunch? Oh, oh, there's a question. Do you like breakfast over lunch? Do you care? Um, no, I take an energy bar to me. Obviously. Yeah, I, I don't care either. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's an annoyance to have to stop and eat, right? All right. That sounds familiar, though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's me too. Uh, all right, we have already done the time, but there were a couple other things here. Um, Mike Brewer, how's our buddy Mike Brewer? He's in England still. Okay. He's um, we just at the NEC. Um, I think they're still shooting, and he's going to be back. I think on the twenty sixth. Oh, good. Yeah, he's coming awesome. back to shoot. We love that. Um, no, he's great. Mike and Michelle, they're so awesome. Yeah, we miss him. Haven't seen him in a while. Uh, and we mentioned uh, uh, Heather only in the, the fact that she makes great breakfast. <laughs> but how is the Porsche wife? <laughs> style by, <laughs> style by speed or what, um, whatever no, Miss Heather's she, name I mean, is. You know, she's she's um, she's working about as hard as anyone I've ever known. You know, That's, I, mean, I mean, like so you know, nothing new. Like like the shirts. You know, I I just painted a painting. I don't know, like the blue, that blue painting, I want to say, I mean, I, I paint, painted the original maybe in 2009 or something. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, so the poster, this is the original poster for them, whatever, but that artwork has existed. That Yeah. I've painted okay. that 2009 and, you know, now there's going to be 600 shirts. So that's all her doing, you know. I L- Looking at it very quickly, I have a, a question about that. Sure. That's, it looks to me... <laughs> I just just asked this. Do you have to obscure Gulf in order to use that? Because I noticed that there's a letter right. missing on each one, and in the business we used to call that greeking, where you would kind of yes. just sort of take out a right. little bit, whatever, so that you could um, still use it without any kind of. I mean, crossover. We, we, we do have a Gulf license in general, but then that one just the reflections all uh, yeah, worked out. I mean, okay. That was kind of. Border. I mean, we don't, not everything we have is golf branded, you know. So it wasn't even necessarily intentional, it just artistically worked yeah, out. Yeah, it kind of worked out that way. Okay. And it, it sometimes with the highlights, because it's a white sticker and it was an actual decal that was on top of the car, it wasn't painted. So you you might get a reflection there. Anyway, it's just yeah. a hot spot where, mm. you know, you might not see everything. And just in general, I think, you know, I mean, oh, the I mean, realism is that it, lo- it looks like those are just reflections. Right. I mean, to me, you know, to my mind, I mean, a lot of my, my artwork isn't super realistic. In Which any is way. so weird because it is. 
Well, I know it's not, but yet it is. You you accomplish what you don't do. Somehow you make sure that the brain fills in. Right. That's kind of the point. Because to me, that kind of makes it more interesting to the viewer. Um, because you, you're, you know, in my mind, you're um, you're kind of uh, participating just by looking at it because you're filling in the gaps yeah. as opposed to me giving you all the information. So to me, that it's kind of draws you again. in. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, I think in general, you know, on the bigger pieces that you showed earlier. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, like show here. this one. There yeah. we go. There are some big ones. Um, you know, I mean, I think. <laughs> nice shoes. Two different yeah. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the, I, there you can see the car that's on my shirt today. Yeah. Right. So this is exactly what we're talking about. Yes. You did that art. Right whatever how that your whole process sketched right, it right. computer then it's done on canvas now then it's digitized in all these ways so that you can make right the uh like the shirt that you're right, wearing right. right now out of it and so i think part of what i'm or to me the, one of the challenges that i'm trying to solve all the time is on the bigger pieces to make those seem dynamic because a lot of times you see you know big things get static very quickly gosh you know well, I mean? and then I'm just going to say that you do a good job because that, no, that but just in great. general, like you know, like if you have a post-it note, it's much easier to put an arrow on a post-it note and to kind of convey, you know, because you can kind of just go off the it's three by three inches. So even just by virtue of me going off the, the three by three inches, it just makes it feel like it needs to leave the page. Mm. But if you're faced with something that's you know ten feet or six feet or eight feet. To, to How to big is this arrow going to be? Right, that's what I mean. And so, not to make things look static, I think that's kind of what I. Uh, not, I mean, that's kind of part of my challenge that I try to solve all the time. I love hearing what you look at. <laughs> it's, no, it's interesting. Right, right. It's interesting. We we all have a different perspective at right, all times, right. even if we're looking at the identical thing right. with it's the super same intent. It's super interesting to see all the different pieces. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's so awesome. But you know, just to get back to Heather. Oh. Um, she, she does do a lot of work that, obviously, you know, you don't see that much because. Well, we do because we. Well, do no, get to I can know you, you, most you guys. People, yeah. Most people don't. You know, most people think. Anytime somebody oh, like, comes to your shop for an open house, it's amazing and holy crap. But if you go there during a normal time where it's just work, the place is torn apart. It's a workshop. Yeah, it's, it's a, a workshop. It's not a but, show place. Right, but you know, I mean, she's she does so much stuff, you know, behind the scenes, and um, you know, it's just. Um, I, I just don't I don't have the right words to express how much uh, it means to me or how much um, you know how much work she actually does. But it sounds to but, me like uh, you're trying to express gratitude. Well, I guess I am. I'm just very very bad <laughs> at it. But you know, in terms of um, you know, magically things just get done. You know, because I I am really just pushing paint around on a canvas. You know, that's your that's your that, opinion. That's, but that's I, what I do. Well, no, I mean you know. Like those images you saw, that's, you know, that takes time and that's what I do. So out of that can, you know, because we're known now for so many other things, you know, like with the shirts or the shoes or, you know, artwork and, you know, um, and so we kind of built a little nice little brand. Yeah. And, but, you know, that's on her shoulders, you know, I mean, so... Well, I would like to say Kudos that you to her, yeah. have successfully credited your wife for all of the behind-the-scenes work that she does within your business and your relationship. Oh, yeah. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. For, well, next, see, major step once for you. again, once again, you applauded me. That's right. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> you need to take these little wins. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> you know, Applaud the it's, effort it's, and say hi to him. Yes, it, it goes to her. You know. Uh, is there anything else for us other no, than we're going to see you Saturday? How long are we? In? This is a long. It's been a long show, right? Uh, you're by yourself. An hour and twenty. Relax. Right, right. An hour and twenty. We're making up for yesterday. Disaster. <laughs> <laughs> People will hopefully be able to hear this one. Sorry, Lisa Taylor. Um, yeah, you're going to be there on Saturday. And is there a time for the signing, or is that just you know? I it I don't know. I I I was told. Um, you know, I don't know what time I was told to be there, <laughs> but I think it starts at eight. Yeah, I think we were told. And at least it goes time. maybe till one ish or so. Um, into the afternoon I know there's a band yes, there's other there's things there's all kinds of stuff going on and um, PCA is going to be there obviously I think something like that <laughs> there'll no? be a lot of people there I'm not I don't know. about that but for you and your stuff uh, yeah we're, we're going to be morning. we're going to have uh, 917 posters there and awesome. I know they're expecting a lot of people so come early a lot get people. your poster it's awesome because like last or two weeks ago, I felt bad for the people who were still in line and yeah. 
little kids crying. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined Christmas. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, oh my. no poster right. for you. Uh, <laughs> God, you're awesome. All right, so it's billboard time. <laughs> Nicholas Hunziger, how do people keep up with you? Oh, oh, you know, I have to mention this. Please. We are having a gigantic sale right now. So if you go to our website, you use the code HOLIDAY when you check out. You get 50% off almost everything. Yeah, Holy cow. Huge, yes, huge. Yes. We share that as well. At yes. HuntakerDesign.com? Uh, shop shop HuntakerDesign.com. Shop so if you go, um, you know, you can beat the holiday rush. <laughs> <laughs> and, beat um, the holiday rush. Yeah, yes. I mean, you know. <laughs> and it's going to be good through December 10. Oh, cool. But still, I mean, we're, we're, we're already starting to run out of stuff, so. Is this a uh, clearance for the end of the year while you make room for a bunch of new stuff? Is that what's going on? Um, partially, yeah. And um, Everything must go. We have lost yes. our lease. <laughs> <laughs> Sofa-sized art marked down. <laughs> you remember those commercials? No? Nobody? I, I remember I'm Crazy Gideon I do. when I first moved to L.A. Yeah, it was Take on Crazy Eddie, who we grew okay. up with. Crazy Eddie. Did East you ever Co- see the movie Splash? No. Really? Oh, wait. Is that the with one the with the mermaid? Yeah, but you don't know well enough to get what I was going to say. Hannah, so Hannah Barbera. That's right. Daryl Hannah Barbera. That's right. Daryl Hannah Montana Barbera. <laughs> Close enough. You're the best. Look, yeah, every time, it's always somebody. I can't. <laughs> There's somebody famous, so I don't want to say it, but you had a really funny one. Oh, Who my God. It? It's so good. I don't remember. It was some, oh. somebody... It was another famous girl like that. And, oh, it's so-and-so because you know whoever she's dating or something. Oh, okay. It was a funny story. I don't remember. <laughs> wow. I was ready to let it go, but you were like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I can't, my, I just, I can't, my, my memory is very bad. Yeah. So I just don't remember stuff. I think you, rem- you remember the important shit. Uh, what do we have tomorrow, Mrs. Ryan? My favorite Jeff Zord. Tomorrow's Thursday. Oh, Tomorrow's Jeff. Thursday, and we're wrapping up PECLA week here in the studio anyway yeah. until we go down to the PEC uh, with Mr. Jeff Swart. Man, that's going to be fun. Love him. Yeah. Good guy. That guy. Yeah. Very, very talented. Very, very talented. Oh, you'll have. Have you talked to him since he's done the movie and all that? Uh, uh, many times, but not on the show. Oh, so he can regale you with we're his We're going to talk um, about all of that. We were talking about maybe even watching the movie tonight. Before. Oh. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Have you not? seen it? No. Racing in the Rain? Art of Racing in the Rain? I haven't seen the whole thing. Just his parts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm his friend, you know, so that's enough. That's no? amazing. That's so that's funny. Enough. That's You're so the funny. greatest. I was, up to do, I was up to work on a job with him uh, through uh, the Hoonigan guys. Right. And it was it was whatever the Jim Connor files. It was the mm-hmm. TV show to, do, to, to cover the last right. Jim Connor. And, and I was so excited because I was, oh, maybe you're going to work with Zwart and the whole thing. And uh, it didn't end up happening. But I, when I talked to him six months later or whatever in a parking lot, he's, oh, you should check it out. It's really good. Went home that day. Totally put it on. I watched his episode. Right. Yeah, of course. One out of ten. <laughs> I'm sure they were all great, right. but who got the time? All right. <laughs> Sorry about all that. Jeff Zwart, we love you. Uh, Mrs. Ryan, we love you. Nicholas Hunziger, we love you. Please give our love to Miss Heather as well. And okay. uh, we are going to see you on Saturday. Yes. And everybody else at the PEC. We love everyone at home. Hopefully we'll see you on Saturday. If not, please love one another. And uh, tomorrow with Jeff Swart. How was that? Good?